Hundreds of thousands of peasants in Pakistan are still working as slaves four years after the practice was finally outlawed. Whole families are kept as bonded labour, forced to work in order to pay off debts to local landowners. In a report to be published next month, Anti-Slavery International also found that many officials are failing to enforce the law. Debt bondage is most widely practised in the largely agricultural southern region of Sindh, the home province of Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Jane Bennett Powell reports now on modern-day slavery in Pakistan and on the efforts to eradicate it. In temperatures of over 40 degrees Celsius, half of Pakistan's labour force works on the land. It's thought most of the landless peasants in the arid province of Sindh are bonded to their employers. The Haris, or slaves, are mainly Hindus of the untouchable caste, bought and sold from one landlord to the next, in settlement of debts inherited from their parents. It's a relationship the landlords often abuse. The daughter the landlord imprisoned in his home gave birth to a son. She was allowed to keep him, but not the other children she bore him. <laughs> Under legislation enacted in 1992, bonded labour is outlawed. Yet Pakistan's Independent Human Rights Commission says it's still widespread in this isolated province. Commission officers on a visit to bonded labourers believe local government turns a blind eye to their plight because of vested interests. The problem, according to the officers, is that the local authority is full of landowners and practices are entrenched. You, you are not Pakistani and you are not northern in Pakistan. Those who are in power, all are landlords, feudal lords. Local newspaper journalists have campaigned to stamp out the system, but they say there's no political will. Not a single Medina has so far been prosecuted, although they have been caught red-handed. So unless they are awarded exemplary punishment, there is no other solution. Today you bust one jail, the next day they would again buy other Haris from other jails. This is what, what is happening here for the last so many centuries. Nor is there any chance of the laborers working off the debts. Even if they could read them, accounts are often bogus. The district commissioner here in Sangar is in charge of stamping out bonded labour. This man, Krishan Kohli, has come to beg for help in freeing his sons. He says they're being forced to work in chains on a farm from which he himself escaped after 25 years. The district commissioner says he's here to help in anything. I told you if you people have anything, you tell me, I am here to give you the company. No. Or my, uh, actually, actually. But the human rights worker who's there too says they asked for help a month ago. If you go with us now, just now, you will see that how, how they are working. This time the police are summoned. There'll be a raid on Krishan Kohli's employer. Perhaps it's the presence of Westerners, but it's rare for a raid to be mounted with such speed or with so many armed police. The landlord has protection too. And Abdul Rahman Mari's family maintain they only want what they're owed by the laborers. But the bonded system is illegal and the workers are told to pack their meagre belongings. The landlord complains he's being ruined and ominously adds that he would get his workers back. This raid wins the freedom of 61 people. It's a tiny fraction of the total. But when later at the police station the workers give their statements, release from their chains marks a new beginning and a new life.
They're offered sanctuary by an Irish Roman Catholic priest. There's shelter at his mission at Matley and work locally, but he's worried that poverty may force them back to the old relationship with their landlord. Because that relationship is so dominant and so strong and so embedded in the ways of thinking and feeling, it's very hard to break that, you know, and it is a very hard process for them not to go back into that kind of, uh, into in, being in debt to the landlords. Uh, that's probably the most difficult part of rehabilitation, you know. And the government minister, who's just been appointed to monitor the bonded labourers, admits there's no budget and no staff. And he's pessimistic about how ready the feudal landlords are to comply with the law. I don't think any feudal lord can like, like this act. Because that is going to put a break on the feudal exploitation. For now, a new group of freed labourers enjoy their liberation and the opportunity to earn a wage for the first time. But these people don't know whether they'll always be safe from their former employers or whether any of the hundreds of thousands of labourers still bonded will ever enjoy such freedom. Jane Bennett Powell reporting.